Welcome to the Apostolic Encounter with the General Overseer of Top Ministries International, Rev. Osewusu Kovna. Sit back to enjoy the message. Kindly share this message to bless others. We bless the name of our Lord for another opportunity to be at His feet. I want to remind you that the virus is still around, so do take good care of yourself and may God richly bless you. Amen. We want to continue our studies on lessons from Abraham. Lessons from Abraham. I believe you are being blessed as we go through this series. Amen. Now let's get to Genesis chapter number 17 and let's take the verse 21. The promised child, the promised child. 17, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, who shall or shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. I want you to take note of God's timing and season. My covenant, because first of all, he made a promise to him. Indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. But there was no specific time bound. But a year to the time when the child will be born. Now God came in there a year by this time. Time bound commitment is very necessary and very important. God said a year by this time, Sarah, thy wife shall give birth. Hallelujah. So let's get to Genesis 21 and let's start from the verse 1. Genesis 21 and let's verse number 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said and the Lord did Unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac. Being eight years, eight days old, as God have commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God have made me to laugh, so that all that here will laugh with me. Hallelujah. May God give you laughter. The child Isaac. The name Isaac means laughter. Oh, he was born and he will feel the joy and excitement in the house. May God give you laughter. May Isaac come into your home. May your expectation not be filled. May the joy of the Lord be your portion. Hallelujah. Sarah gave him birth at the age of 90 and Abraham was 100 years old. It was the doing of the Lord. It was a miracle. But all things are possible with God. And nothing shall be impossible with him. Is there anything too hard for God? Yes. God proved faithful. And at a set time, Sarah gave birth. So the scriptures are now fulfilled. Now let's move on to the next chapter 22. Chapter 22. God came in again and he came with another agenda. Mm -hmm. Chapter 22 of Genesis. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Mm. <laughs> God came with a plan to tempt, just to tempt Abraham. Very strong. Then Abraham, let's see what Abraham will do from verse number 3. Let's get to the 3. He prepared himself to move on. Amen. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and cleave and cleave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God to, had told him, let's get to the verse mm -hmm, 8. The, then, then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw 
the place afar off. Let's get to the verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went, both of them, both of them together. Listen, God will provide himself for a lamb for the burnt offering. God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Wow. Yeah, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering. The son asked him, this is the fire, where, where is it? He, he could not actually say you are the lamb. Hallelujah. But he said, God will provide by faith. He declared God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them. Amen. It's interesting when you read this account. But Abraham had, when you, you study other scriptures, you find out that Abraham faced a challenge by faith. Look at to Hebrews chapter number 11. And then verse 17. Hebrews 11 verse 17. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had re received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. Mm -hmm. 18. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall that seed be called. 19. Mm -hmm. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Now listen, God has said, in Isaac, in Isaac, I will bless the whole families of the whole world. And the same God came and said, take thy son, thy only son Isaac, go and sacrifice him. Then he now started sitting down, reasoning, and he said, look, I know even if I sacrifice Isaac, God will be able to raise him up. So Abraham believed in the resurrection. When he sacrificed Isaac, God will be able to raise him up. So the Bible is saying, by faith, Abraham sacrificed his son. In his heart, he had given over Isaac on the altar of sacrifice. He took the, he burned the child, laid on the altar, he took the knife about to slaughter him, him. And God, the angel of the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham, touch not the Lord. For now I know that thou fear God. You see, it's interesting that Abraham could trust the Lord. Yes, he trusted the Lord. Because he said it was impossible for God to lie to him. God, I have told me in Isaac, you bless all the families of the earth. And now if you make a request that you need Isaac as a sacrifice, I'll offer him. But remember that promise you made to me. And so he said, even if I kill him, he's able to raise him because he will not lie. Hallelujah. So on that basis, Abraham just followed. And God gave him instruction. Praise the Lord. The beautiful thing is that he had this. The sacrifices to God is a privilege. <laughs> that is our subject for the day. The sacrifices to God are a privilege. That is our subject. Under Abraham's studies. When God calls you to make a sacrifice, particularly when he made a specific demand, when it is not a general offering or come and give an offering, no. But he makes specific demand. Then you are privileged. Because there is a reason why he made that specific demand. Let me give you an example. When you come to Genesis chapter number 15, God said to Abraham, give me a sacrifice. And then he named the animals. And the best. Put them together. And Abraham offered those sacrifices. And when you read the scripture, he said he was, from morning to evening, he had to work such that no best who touched the, the sacrifices of God. And finally, getting to the evening, the deep sleep from the Lord fell upon Abraham. And he fell asleep and now God started speaking to him, giving him dreams and visions into the future. He said, your surely your descendant will go into where? Captivity for all. 400 years and I will deliver them and bring them back to this land. You are the same. Abraham was complaining that he had not got a child. But God was saying, look, it's not about your child. 
<laughs> it's about a nation. Out of your loins are coming a nation. So he showed him that. And for him to get that, he make him to make a sacrifice. That's why I said, sacrifices of God is a privilege. When God make a specific demand, sacrifice this for me. You know it's a privilege. Because as you begin to obey, you will see the manifestations of God. Because it is written, those who keep the commandments of the law, they are those who love him. So when God comes in there, it's not a general offering or titan and those, no, 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 no. Specific demand. Go and do that. And you follow. Then you are sure that God will now show up with a blessing. Hallelujah. So Abraham offered Isaac in his heart. And God gave a pledge to him. Let's go to verse number 16 and then 17. Mm -hmm. 22, 16, 17. <laughs> and said, By myself have I sworn unto the, unto the Lord. For because I had done this thing and have not withheld thy son, thy only son, <laughs> that in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the sea, seashore. And that he shall possess the gates of his enemy. Listen, this is God speaking to Abraham. Because thou have not withheld thy son, the only son whom thou love, in blessing I will bless you. That's why I said, if God made a specific demand on you, it's a privilege. When he made a specific request, go and do this. And then you follow him. It's a privilege. Hallelujah. Yes. So Abraham was... He saw God in a new, a new dimension. Praise the Lord. Let's read this thing also about Abraham. What he said. <laughs> what the scripture said about him. Romans chapter number 4. And then let's take the verse number 17. Romans 4, 17. Very interesting. Mm. <laughs> Abraham. Abraham. Father Abraham. Abraham. Hmm. And then the verse number 17. Good. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they are. The scripture is telling that God called those things which be not as war. They are. Hmm. Let's read it from the New King James, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who also lived to the, gives life to the dead and called those things which be not as though they are. Listen, God called things into existence. So he called those things who do not exist. That's the New King James. Call those things we do not exist as though they are. Listen, I want you to understand that there's something about God. He is a creator. He is not a manufacturer. When we talk about manufacturing, it means he will take one thing, add other components, and then do another thing. Out of many, many things he's holding his hand, he will make a product out of it. But when you talk about God, the things which even nobody have thought of, who nobody can imagine. It is things which are not existing. Ha. He called them into existence. That is why we call him a creator. He is a creator. Hallelujah. He will call things which be not as though they are. There are times he even can work a creative miracle. Creative miracle. The thing which is not there, he will bring it. Ah, that is the almighty God. That is why when God says anything, brother, don't doubt him. Don't doubt him. Like Abraham, let's begin to trust the Lord with all our hearts. Hallelujah. Why? He is a creator and not a manufacturer. He can call into existence anything, anything. 
In fact, when Jesus appeared for the second time, at the sound of his voice, the, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the scripture. He will, he will speak from the heavens. And those who are believers, they will come out from their graves with new bodies. This is who he is. The creator, he will call into existence. He will give new life to people. This is Jesus, the resurrected law. All power is given to him. He is a creator and not a manufacturer. Hallelujah. Look at this scripture. John chapter 9, then let's take the verse number 1. John 9, 1. And then, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was born blind from his birth. Get to the verse 6. Mm -hmm. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of a spittle, and he anointed the eyes of a blind man with a clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is interpretation sent. He went his way before and washed and came seen. Hallelujah. This man was born with our eyes. He, from the clay, he formed a new eye. Just place it there. Just go and wash. You will see. He went out there and washed. This is what we call creative miracle. Creative miracle. It is not existing. If there is an eye which cannot see, it will be a healing or miracle. But this one, it was not there. That is who Christ is. He called into existence things we have not seen. So that is why you don't need to be afraid. You are working with the creator. He can call anything into existence. If God is speaking to you, don't go by your reasoning and by your logic. Hallelujah. It is important. Now let's move on with God. So Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. From that time he got a relationship with him. And now he started working with God. He now giving birth to a child. And now the request was go and offer him. Hallelujah. And God vowed by himself. By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, that in blessing I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed. Yes. Why? Because Abraham believed God. I want to encourage you, brother, that you need to believe God. If nothing... If nothing, if you read the scripture, nothing, you got nothing, please believe the Lord. Hallelujah. But you see, but Pastor, when God comes and speak to me like he spoke to Abraham, good, that is another subject for another time. But hear me, because you are born of God and you are a believer, his spirit dwells in you. And the scripture will tell you as many as are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Or the Holy Spirit by that still small voice in your heart will be speaking to you continually. Don't abandon him. He may not come by an angel. I'm not saying angels may not appear. But they can come. But not, no, that is not the issue. The issue thing is that the Spirit of God dwells in you. And continually he will be guiding and speaking into you. Pay attention to his voice. And God will guide you and work many things out. If we make sacrifices unto God, it's a privilege. Now let's look to Christ. The Lord also made sacrifices unto him, unto the Father. Philippians chapter 2, and let's get to the verse 8. Philippians 2 verse 8. And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death on the cross. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him, and giving him a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth. And things under the earth. Mm -hmm. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Listen, he made the greatest sacrifice. A righteous man will now sing. But willing to offer himself in obedience to the Father to pay the price for our redemption at Calvary's cross. He died that we believe. He paid that price. And because he has done that, the scripture is telling us, look, he is highly exalted and given a name which is about every other name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will 
confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now listen. Because Jesus Christ humbled himself and became man and died and paid a price, he is now highly exalted. What am I saying? Listen. Sacrifices to God. <laughs> it's a privilege. Now he is highly exalted. At the name of Jesus, every knee bowed, every tongue confess that he is Lord, Lord to the glory of God. And as many as even hear his name, there is no name given among men by which we might be saved. When you hear the name of Jesus and you believe the gospel, you will be saved. Because it is written, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is all based on the sacrifices he made at the Calvary. In obedience to the Father. Abraham obeyed God and made sacrifices. And God vowed by himself to bless him. Hallelujah. Now let's get to the disciples and let's get something. Hallelujah. Now let's get to Ephesians chapter number 2. And then let's take the verse 20. Ephesians 2.20 <laughs> And build upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now listen. Something very interesting. Some of the apostles, James and John to be specific. When you read mighty, mighty 20 from verse number 1 to no, from verse 20 to 23, they came to the Lord to make a request. And it's interesting. Their requests were very simple. Their mother was just lobbying for position for them, his children. It's a good wish because any good mother will want his children to be of some, have some good positions. Yeah. So he was desiring. He thought everything was just a natural way. Uh, so he went in the lobby. He was a lobbyist. So he made a request. And he said unto her, what do I thou? She said unto him, Grant that these my two sons sit, may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left, in thy kingdom. Mm, in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye, ye know no what he asked. Yes, he didn't know what he was asking. Mm. Are ye able to drink of a cup that I drink of? And be, able, and be baptized of the baptism that I'm baptized of. They say unto him, we are able. Okay. And he said unto them, ye shall drink indeed of a cup. And be baptized of the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit at the right hand and on the left is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared for my father. Hallelujah. Now, it's interesting this woman was a lobbyist and she was just came to the door with a request that her children will have positions. Well, it's good. But then, he didn't understand what he was saying. But Jesus said some of the things he was speaking parables. And this one was, this was one of them. <laughs> Can you drink all the cup which I'm, I would drink? And, <laughs> and they said, yeah. But remember, before Jesus got to the cross, when you get to Luke chapter number 22, he went to prayer meeting, making a request that Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass over me. That was the type of cup we were talking with them. And he prayed through, and he was energized by angels in prayer. So he's, he prayed through, and the angel came to strengthen him, and then he went through to the cross. And now he's making, say, are you able to drink of my cup? And they say, we are able. They didn't understand what they were making. They said, yeah, you will drink. But he never told them you are going to be killed. <laughs> why? But the, the 12, and most of the great leaders in the scriptures, they were all martyrs for the kingdom, for the expansion of the gospel of Christ. Hear me, brother. There is a price for a high calling of God in Christ. And Paul said he was pursuing that. When he came to the end, he said, the time is up and I'm about to be offered. And he was crucified. 
Yes. What was it? They had a high calling. And they were appointed to be sacrifices unto God. So that they would take their positions in the kingdom. I want you to understand. That the Lord himself was the chief cornerstone. He said we are building on the foundations of the apostles and the prophet. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Hear me. Jesus Christ he offered himself as a lamb. A covering cloth for our redemption. The apostles also gave their life for the expansion of the gospel. And it is interesting. And he said Lord give me that. Give me that. He said look. In his kingdom, if you want to attain to some height, be ready for sacrifices. Are you ready to offer yourself? Now the gospel will hear that you will have that, you will have that, you will hear that. But I came to your way. Begin to consider this. Is it the same kingdom of God we are talking about? And are we building on the same foundations or another one? If it is the kingdom of Jesus Christ, Paul said, no other foundation can any other man lay than which <laughs> Christ have laid. So listen, when we talk about the kingdom of God, and you want to be great in the kingdom of God, it call for sacrifice. Sacrifice. We are building on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And if you only walk with I can get that God bless me gospel. And I have that and I have that and I have that. I'm not saying God wants you to be poor. That is not it. The Bible says actually Jesus was rich but I say he became poor that we may be rich. Yes. But the truth is this. They were also like them. We were like them. They were desiring many many good things. But what was the plan of God for them? They were to be Matthias of a kingdom. They were to be sacrifices and the Bible said they have 12 thrones prepared for them. Specially called by the Lord himself. They were with him all right here and they gave their life for the expansion of the gospel. They were all sacrificed and they have their thrones in heaven. So he called on us that we are building on these foundations. The foundations of the apostles and prophets where sacrifices are a privilege. Marianda Hakaya sacrifices are a privilege in the kingdom of my Lord Jesus Christ. Sacrifices are a privilege. Sacrifices are a privilege. You see, we are told you can get that. It is not about what you can get because Jesus said, Remember what the Lord said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Some of them get their life, ah, ah, ah. they get their life of a sacrifice. It's a privilege to be called to serve the Lord. It's a privilege to be called to make sacrifices. It's a privilege to avail yourself for the cause of the gospel. It is a privilege to be sent by God with the power of God, with the unction of the Lord, and then you offer yourself as a sacrifice on the mission field, doing the work of God. You offer yourself as a shepherd, taking care of God's flock. You offer yourself with the calling of God upon your life in the ministry. Hear me somebody brother, hear me. Oh my God, if you are called, it's a privilege. When you call and when he speaks specifically to you, then it means you are blessed. Hallelujah. As Father Abraham, oh when they died, when they enter into heaven, they said they want to get away into the bosom of Abraham. Mama, mama, mama. The guy is there. Oh, Father Abraham. Yes. He became the symbol. Uh, you come in there. You come and meet Father Abraham. Eternally he's alive and very well. Hallelujah. We desire to be there. That is why I came in your way. When you are serving God, please you come to a place. The best thing you do is give your life to him in prayer. Let him lead you. And let him guide you. And when he made a call and a demand of your life, offer yourself. <laughs> because listen, if you offer yourself unto God in any area of calling, you will never be at a loss. 
is a privilege to offer yourself. And Paul called it the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That is a high calling. We are privileged to be called. And now you hear people, when you call, you call him to give a tithe and offer, he complaining. My goodness. You don't, you don't understand the kingdom. You don't understand our God. People were called to give their life. People were called. And then they sacrificed their life. Just for the gospel of the law. To expand to you and me. Some of them. I got to a place. One of the towns. A man who traveled. For about 20 years. He stayed. At Banai in Crow. I went in there in Jordan. He humbled a place and he dwelt there to learn the language, Nafana, to get the alphabet, write a New Testament translation. My goodness. And he was doing that great work. I went to that place. He had finished his assignment and located in Tamale. I used that place and started preaching the gospel. Are you with me? They laid the foundation. His life. He had a place to stay. But why do you take that village to learn the language and the culture? To get a right interpretation. To get the scriptures translated into their language. These were the sacrifices men have made in the kingdom. Sacrifice your life. What am I telling? Brother, hear me. This kingdom have opportunities. Many of them. But we have been called as ministers of the gospel. To give our life for the expansion of a kingdom. To preach Christ unto many. That is a challenge of our generation. Brother, I came in your way. Hear me. A sacrifice for God is a privilege. A sacrifice for God is a privilege. And many things, when you call for even offering, money, what? He's complaining. A memory. Money. You can't even offer tithe. Can you give your life if you can give tithe? Marita Siko Mohakaba. Coming your way, the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The price for the high calling. The kingdom is coming. The Lord is coming in glory and in power. He is coming to meet his own. He is coming to save his own and taking them home. And they will receive crowns and glory. That is what they live for. This is what the Bible says. And this is what the gospel is preaching. It's not about how much, you, how much money you have in the bank. It's about how much sacrifice you are able to make. Samor Hitimba Hakaba. Let me change your gospel now. Is that how much you save in the bank? Is that how much sacrifice you have made? To make a sacrifice for the kingdom is a blessing. So hear me. May you be led by God in your sacrifices for Him. Shall we pray? Mahali le Mosia Kabaraba. Oh my God, this is my heart cry. That release the grace of giving upon your church. Grace of giving. That we may first of all give our life. And then be willing to give every resource. Human and spiritual and material resource. To be a blessing to the generation. To reach out and be a witness to others. I pray my God. That we will see the king coming. And we will be ready to meet him in glory. I pray my God that our life. We'll be worth living. That we'll live for the cause. We'll live to fulfill a purpose. We'll live that we will see the king. We'll live that we'll enter his presence. And we'll be welcome home. May we enter into heaven. Where the Lord himself will stand on his feet and welcome us. Because we'll live here to please him. We honor you Lord. We bless your name. I pray for all the brethren today. May the grace of giving. Be released on them. Receive the grace of giving. In the name of Jesus Christ. That you'll be able to give yourself and life to him. Let this grace transform us into new people. Doing the will of God. Let this grace affect us. For the sacrifices unto God are a privilege. May we walk in this privilege. And may we fulfill our calling. In Jesus' name, amen. You're coming into the kingdom. You want Jesus to come into your heart. Please this prayer, this prayer with me.
prayed, dear Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Lord, grant me grace to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Find a good church to attend. And may God be with you. Amen. God bless you. For having time with the General Overseer, you can follow Reverend Wusu Kobana on social media for prayers and counseling. Please call plus 233-244-614965. Thank you and God bless you.